The search for life on Mars is an incredibly challenging endeavour. Despite all the missions that we've had to Mars over the past kind of 10 to 20 years, we still don't know an awful lot about the actual chemical environments that might have existed. To understand what type of life may have actually been able to live in these environments is actually very challenging. So to tackle this, we try and look at really extreme environments on Earth. Uh, for example, some of the brines that uh, the Mark looks at, uh, to try and understand exactly kind of what types of life might have been able to survive there. You use data from spacecraft, and as Claire was saying, these missions are very technologically challenging. So before we design a mission, before we send it out there, we have to know where we want to send it to be able to bring the risk down and be able to bring the potential for a scientific return up. So to do that, we create some of these types of environments here in the lab and try and piece together what about them makes them potentially a habitat or not a habitat for life. Here's an example of a simulated Martian brine. Um, the green colour comes from a high level of dissolved iron. We look at microbes that live in high salt environments. We pull out microbes from there and we try and understand like, how they survive in these types of environments to give us a better idea of where to target with a spacecraft. Yeah, I and mean, this is really important because Mars is huge, right? You know, you have this entire geological surface to try and explore with a handful of missions, and ExoMars is just one rover going to, to one particular locality on Mars. So in order to target it to the right areas, you want to really be able to identify what particular minerals we really want to be trying to focus on. So this is one of the microbiology labs. It's like a giant zoo of different microbes from extreme environments. By looking at how those microbes survive in extremes, we can start to map the extremities to which life can survive. Now we're entering the anaerobic laboratory, and what we do here is we study microbes under conditions that have no oxygen. Deep underground, there is no oxygen, and microbes that live there live in the absence of oxygen, as would anything living, for example, on another planet like Mars. So we're going into the lab now where we have a simulated Mars chamber that allows us to recreate conditions, liquid conditions on the surface of ancient or present day Mars. We have these sample pots here where we can look at the interactions between liquid and solids like rocks. And we can flow liquid through and we can look at the gases being produced. This is part of the effort to recreate environments on the Earth. It's very difficult to send missions to Mars, so the cheapest way to, uh, to look at ancient Martian environments is to recreate them on the surface of the Earth. And that's precisely what we're doing here. So what we're looking at here are actually some organisms that are quite happy growing under a certain set of characteristics that are common on Mars, or at least were common in a certain type of environment on Mars. They might look small, but these guys are living in a very extreme environment, very, very low pH, high levels of iron, um, and very salty as well. So it's the kind of, the kind of environment that uh, would have existed for actually quite a long period of time throughout Mars's surface history. Astrobiology is a very old field in the sense that people have been asking, is the Earth the only planet with life for a long time? I think what's changed in the last 20 years is it's become a much more empirical field in the sense we have missions going to other planetary bodies. We know a lot more about the limits of life on Earth, primarily because of advances in microbiology. Planetary missions in general are very interdisciplinary. You need chemists to understand the past chemical environment. You need physicists to understand uh, the conditions that may have existed in the past and how they were shaped by the physical environment. And you need biologists to be able to take that data and assess whether it matches up to habitability. The primary objective of ExoMars is to study the habitability of Mars. It will also look at possible biosignatures of life. What we do know is that there are environments that have all the requirements for life, the right elements, possible energy sources, and liquid water. And so the obvious step is to go and see whether those environments ever supported life.